Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Patrick. It is very nice to see you again. Today, I want to talk about communication, and I thought we'd start with an idiom. Let me ask you this. Have you ever made plans with someone, say, to have breakfast over the weekend, and you arrive at the restaurant on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, and the people you weren't supposed to meet did not show up? So you call them. Hi. Hi, it's Patrick. I'm here at the restaurant. Where are you guys? And you find out that they had made plans for breakfast on Sunday, not Saturday. But you thought it was Saturday. Oh my gosh. It, I do remember now. You did say Sunday. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. We just got our wires crossed. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. We got our wires crossed. When we get our wires crossed, that means there has been a, mis a miscommunication. We got our wires crossed. I thought one thing, and you thought another thing. Let me tell you where that comes from. Wires. What's a wire? Wire. This is a wire, right? You remember when these things were connected to phones, like many of you, maybe your parents' phones, right? That's why mobile phones are also called wireless telephones sometimes. Okay, now, think about this. I want you to think about are like the really old movies. No, no, not movies from the 80s. I want you to think about like movies from your grandparents. See if you've ever remembered this. Think about really, really old telephones. Back when they had operators. Remember, there would be an operator, right? So someone would make a call. Hi, I'd like you to connect me to New York City. And then they'd cut to the operator. And the operator would say, one moment, please. And she'd take a wire out of a board and she'd stick it over here. And she'd take another wire and put it over here. And now you're connected to New York City. But if she did not do that right, if she crossed the wires, or if he crossed the wires, then the communication would be wrong. You got your wires crossed. You're not communicating in the right way. That's where that, that comes from. So if you have a miscommunication with someone, and you learn about it, you say, I'm sorry, we got our wires crossed. Now I am a listening and speaking teacher, and today what I want to talk about is improving communication in the United States. I'm taking an example from one of our higher level listening speaking books. In my class, we sometimes have debates where half of the class will this, you know, think this way on one issue and it will be the other half of the class's job to debate that issue or to argue against that issue. You've done that before, right? Now in the United States, and in this book, there are a couple of recommendations for how to express disagreement. And I want to show you one of them. This is from the book. It says, one way to say express disagreement is to say, I'm not sure I agree with you because, I'm not sure I agree with you because, and then you present your other point. Now here's what I want to say. And again, this is about communicating English in the United States in the best possible way so the other person understands you. That's what communication is about. Understanding and being understood. When you're making an argument, when you're expressing disagreement, the most important thing in my mind when you're arguing is never to make it personal. Keep your emotions out of it. Now take a look at this sentence again. I'm not sure I agree with you because, okay? You see this you? I want to suggest something. What if I changed it to, I'm not sure I agree with that. I'm not sure I agree with that because... Now when you change you to that, right, you're making your argument less personal. And the person who is hearing you will understand you more. Because sometimes when we say you, when we hear you, it is personal. It's the most personal word in the world, right? You. I'm not sure I agree with you. You are wrong, right? Nobody wants to hear that. Right? Instead, ah, that's an interesting point. I'm not sure I agree with that point because this. I'm taking the personal out of it, right? So someone's not, I'm, I'm not perceiving someone is attacking me anymore. Oh, he doesn't agree with me. Well, what's wrong with him? He should listen to me. Oh, he doesn't agree with my point. He doesn't agree with that. Does that make sense? Now, another suggestion from the book was this. Look at this. 
I think you are wrong because. Here's what I want to say to this. All right? If you're having a debate with someone, right? a professional debate, an, a, a, like a, a debate in school, an argument in school, really, let me say this, most of the time, don't say that. Even though the book says that, I say don't. I think you are wrong because, change it to this, I think that is wrong because. And you know what? Let me do it one better. You know what? I, you know, I don't, I don't think that is right. All right? I don't think that's right because, all right, it sounds a heck of a lot better than you are wrong. Nobody wants to hear that they're wrong. Say you are wrong for your, for your brother, your sister, for your best friends, for the people who already love you and are patient with you, right? What? Oh, you are totally wrong. No, there is no way that the Beatles had only one good album. You are so wrong. Don't be stupid. I'm talking to my brother. You see, my brother accepts that. He's patient with me. But when you're having a, a, an academic debate or when you're talking to someone, change it to that, right? because you're taking them out of the equation. Does that make sense? So this is a way to get along peacefully, improve your chances of being understood in communication. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all I have for today. I want to talk more about improving communication, but if you liked this video, I would really appreciate it if you clicked like down at the bottom, right? Uh, thank you for visiting the Learn English with Solex webpage. I hope to see you again. Have a wonderful day.